Sunfish are common in the warmer waters of the Pacific and Indian Oceans. They live among coral reefs and are often associated with anemones. They are very friendly and get along with many other types of fish. Although they all look similar, there are three distinct types of everyone's favourite clownfish. Ocellaris clownfish, also known as false percula. Darwin ocellaris, native only to Darwin, Australia. Percula clownfish, also known as true percula. And misbar. Incomplete stripes like this can happen in Ocellaris, Percula and Darwin Ocellaris. In a school of clownfish, the most dominant becomes a female while the rest are all male. If the female of the group ever dies, the next most dominant clownfish will become the new female. Mating can occur after the clownfish reach two years of age. The process begins with the male. Clownfish lay eggs, so it's up to the male to find a nice safe spot where the female can lay her eggs. He will spend much of his time cleaning the area. Once the eggs are laid, his job will then be to fertilize them. When the area is ready, he will then lead a female back to it. The pair will spend a lot of time together, continuing to clean the area, fanning it with their tails, and picking at it with their mouths. They will perform a wiggle dance to synchronize the timing so the eggs can be successfully laid and fertilized. Eggs are laid in the late afternoon. It can be a clutch of over a hundred eggs. The parents will care for the eggs by fanning them to keep them aerated and removing any bad ones to keep the rest healthy. After a week, the eggs will need to be moved to a separate tank. Moving the eggs is necessary to ensure each baby receives proper nutrition and care. The pot will be moved to a new tank where the young babies will have plenty of food when they hatch. A replacement pot is added before extraction to help distract the parents as the eggs are moved to their new home. The eggs are kept underwater to avoid damaging them. They are then added to a breeder tank. Bubbles keep the eggs aerated. The tank is partially covered because newborn babies are sensitive to light. After eight days, the eggs will hatch. 
The newly born fry are silver in colour and the size of a grain of rice. The food they need to survive is even smaller. They are fed rotifers, which is a type of plankton. The rotifers look like dust to the naked eye. After two weeks, the fry will begin to develop stripes and look more like their parents. At this stage, they begin to look and act more like clownfish, which includes engaging in a little sibling rivalry. As they have gotten bigger, so has the food. They are now fed newly hatched brine shrimp. This new food is a bit easier to see with the naked eye. After a month's time, the young clowns will grow significantly larger. With many predators in the wild, only about 5% of the fry will make it to adulthood. In captivity, survival rates can be as high as 90%. Such high survival rates mean that in captivity many unusual variations can be seen. Snowflake clownfish, frostbite clownfish, Picasso clownfish. These variations become brighter and more exaggerated as the young clowns get larger. This little guy's name is Perkins. He was born through a breeding program at an aquarium in Dallas, Texas. He's a percular clownfish born in February 2016. In this video, Perkins is six months old. By encouraging facilities to breed clownfish in captivity, we can help protect clownfish out in the wild.